All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Real Estate Playbook. My name is Paul Goldman. I'm here with Mr. Joe LaCicero. How are you today, Joe? I'm doing great, Paul. How about yourself? Not bad, man. Thanks for asking. Glad to hear you're doing well. Uh, so this is episode one, inaugural episode of uh, our new podcast series, the Real Estate Playbook. And we've been working on this for some time, so it's glad to, or it's good to see it rather come to fruition. Absolutely. It's nice so to kind of finally get it launched. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I got to say, this this tech is making this a lot more fun too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely fun handling all the logistics and figuring everything out. That's absolutely. For sure. Um, so for those people that don't know us out there, let's take a second to introduce ourselves. I'll go okay. first if you don't mind. Uh, so I'm with the marketing and listing coordination department here at 54. Uh, prior to joining the team, I had about zero experience with real estate. Uh, I actually worked at a car dealership. Uh, my mother, she works in the mortgage industry. So I would get bits and pieces growing up of real estate lingo and things like that. But to be honest, it kind of all sounded like gibberish to me. So <laughs> I always had um, like a sort of uh, reproach to, or a, like a kind of a fear of real estate growing up because um, just because of that. Um, so after joining 54 in 2019, I picked up quite a few things pretty quickly um, just out of necessity for the job, but there's still a lot that I don't know. Um, so I think that's why doing this podcast is going to be so fun. Uh, because not only will I have the opportunity to talk to and learn from some people who know this stuff a lot better than I do, um, but also I could probably help translate some of the the lingo to the people out there that don't know or are not as familiar with um, real estate in general. Absolutely. Um, so on that note, before we get into your background, um, just to kind of give people an idea of what the podcast will be, um, we basically plan on having just talks like this. Uh, either in person or sort of on Zoom like this. Um, and it would be myself as a host, yourself as a host, or the two of us. And then obviously, we're going to be bringing in all kinds of different guests. So we'll have top agents from the brokerage, from the area, um, just big players in the market, people that uh, are familiar with different aspects of real estate, things like that. Um, and we want to tap into a lot of different topics and hopefully provide some value to not only agents, but to like the average buyer and seller out there. So we're very much casting a wide net and we hope that um, this will be good for some people out there. Um, so that being said, for the people out there that don't know much about you, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, the journey and how you've gotten to kind of where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so i uh, born and raised in the Bay Area. So, you know, I've been in Tampa my whole life. Um, fast forward, graduated USF 2004 uh, with a bachelor's in business management wasn't quite sure what I want to do uh, prior to graduating, um, was in hospitality, bartending, serving for about a decade, just kind of, you know, throughout high school, college, and um, a little bit shortly after graduating, just while I was kind of finding my, my career path and starting the journey. Um, upon um, graduation, first job was in the mortgage industry, um, got into it back in, I guess, late 04, early 05. Um, obviously times were really good there, got my first job and I'm like, Hey, you know, this making money thing isn't so tough. So, <laughs> um, you know, obviously it was the market we were in, um, and you know, the, um, amount of loan products and everything that was available and accessible then, and you know, how quickly the homes were appreciating and that there weren't as many, anywhere near as many regulations as there are now, it was easy to generate loans and to sell loans based on, you know, people's needs, whether they need to cash out refinance or a little bit more loose with the guidelines. Um, rates were favorable. They were coming down from a, at a high point they once were, and then homes were accelerating at such a high price. So I got in, was working for a couple of different mortgage companies. So about 06, opened up my own mortgage branch uh, with a partner, uh, Mark Hogriff, um, who is still one of our affiliated partners on the mortgage side here with Sunpoint Home Loans. Mm -hmm. uh, we had that till about 08, um, you know, kind of when the market really took a nosedive, um, kind of went belly up, you know, trying to keep it afloat, you know, and then try to keep the business float, you know, exhaust a lot of the personal resource, uh, you know, resource we had finances and trying to kind of keep the mortgage company going in the anticipation that it would kind of turn around. Unfortunately, it didn't as, as quick as it did. So uh, back in 06, rewind a little bit, I did get my license in real estate, wasn't really actively practicing, just got it to do a couple transactions here and there, but wasn't using it as my primary source of income. So in 08 to 2010 was kind of just whatever I had to do to put food on the table, just taking some odd jobs. You know, the market wasn't really that great. So, you know, just uh, at the time we had four young kids, me and my wife, my wife was 
a homemaker. Um, it was more, you know, at that time when where the economy was cost effective to leave her home with the kids than, you know, to look at daycare or other avenues just because um, wages weren't really high then and the cost of, you know, putting them in something like that would definitely outweigh anything that she was able to produce. So mm -hmm. in 2010, a buddy of mine opened an all state agency, was doing really well, um, was looking to expand aggressively and open up secondary locations. I ended up getting my 220 license, went there to help him out. At that time, a buddy of mine I know, um, DJ Rondu with Bay to Bay Lending, he started, he, um, they're partnering with a real estate company called McBride & Kelly over in the South Tampa area, I believe they're still there. And he was telling me about Zillow leads, kind of like, you know, they're buying Zillow leads, having a lot of success, this and that, was telling me kind of went into it, um, you know, and, and how, you know, what the cost was, the ROI they were seeing and all that good stuff and how the end buyers were more long tail and, um, you know, kind of like bottom of the funnel type buyers where they're already starting to identify properties opposed to more of the leads that a lot of people generate, whether it's Google or Facebook, and you're kind of getting them at top of the funnel where you have to incubate them yourself. Right. So he's doing really well there. My wife had um, extensive um, service and hospitality experience as well. So we we're always good with customer service, kind of knew that aspect. I thought she'd do very well at real estate. So in about 2010, she got licensed. So she kind of, if you want to, you know, think about it from this way, she was kind of the foundation of the team, the organization where mm -hmm. it started. Um, I was still running the all state agency at that time. Um, my wife, Rose, we signed up for Prudential, it used to be Prudential Tropical Realty. Now it's Berkshire over in the Land O'Lakes area. Uh, we were there a couple of years. Um, Rose started to perform very well. At that time, I was starting, I guess we're back in 2011, 2012. Um, that's when all the kind of the hedge funds came out. Um, a couple of things that, you know, we were doing and examining our business was one um, in the area we were at, which is Land O'Lakes. You know, we primarily focus on what we call Central Pasco, um, which was Land O'Lakes, uh, um, Lutes, uh, Wesley Chapel, New Tampa, Trinity, Odessa areas. Mm -hmm. And we kind of wanted something catchy to kind of brand ourselves without using our last name. We saw a lot of people kind of losing the last names and, you know, it's very easy, but, you know, with us, I knew that everybody always butchered my last name. Not that many people pronounce <laughs> it right. So um, we went a different route. And then I wanted something where the URL was going to be catchy and something to kind of brand us on where it all started, what area we were going to focus on. And obviously we both had the vision of where we wanted it to go. So the main areas that we worked were off the 54 corridor. If you know, you're familiar with that area. Of course. So, so at that time we came out 54 Realty. Um, you know, we kind of outgrew the comp plan that Berkshire had and we're, exploring opportunities on, you know, where we could go next and kind of further enhance our business and also um, not only gain more knowledge and expertise, but also become more profitable. So we went to Keller Williams 2012. Um, we were there um, with Hank Sorensen till about 2017, so about five years, learned a lot of things really, Keller really kind of taught us a lot on how to run a business, the team model, things like that, which is essentially a mini brokerage. So it was very good to kind of get insulated with them. And it created a great foundation for Rose and I on, you know, what to do in our next step and our progression into where we are now. In 2017, you know, we were exploring the possibility of a, a Remax franchise, um, kind of deciding what we wanted to do. I know with Color Williams, they kind of have territory restrictions. That wasn't really an option. So we kind of, um, there was a Remax broker partner or a Remax brokerage who was expanding to the area. So we thought, hey, you know, it might be a good idea to get embedded in the culture. Uh, let's go kind of see what Remax is all about. Um, we work for uh, Christian Bennett and Sally Swinkford. Um, they have Remax champions. They're, their bigger office is over in Trinity. And they also have another location in Land Lakes. Um, great people, you know, it was great to work with them. Uh, learned a lot of stuff, but, you know, based on where we wanted to go in our journey, we just felt that we were gonna have more creative control and flexibility by going the independent route. So, you know, and kind of exploring and examining what we want to do what the that next chapter of, you know, the broker's going to look like. We ended up um, getting in to, I guess you'd call it like an interview process with Zillow. They were bringing the Zillow offer um, platform to the Bay Area. It was about a six month process, kind of went through that, ended up fortunately uh, landing that. And at the same time, we launched Zillow Offers. We also launched the independent brokerage, which was October 21st of 19. And kind of the rest is history. So, you know, it's um, Rose is kind of that foundation and starting. I was kind of working uh, at Allstate to put food on the table. She had was probably in sales for about a year, year and a half before I kind of 
um, piggybacked in and, and started really building up the team with her because she was handling more of the sales and, and bringing in the revenue and stuff like that at that time. So I, I had the, I guess, you know, I was fortunate enough to have the time because she had the resources coming in to start to learn the team concept, how to build it, what's working and things of that nature. So we kind of work great as a team and really building that foundation to get us where we are now. Absolutely. So first, before I ask you what I wanted to ask you, that comment about your last name was hilarious because I still see people today that, that still mispronounce it. Lo Cicero, <laughs> you get all kinds of different things. So I think that's oh, yeah. probably the right move, right? Yeah, Lo Cirio, they just drop a C, so whatever it might be. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I didn't know a lot of that about you. Um, and it sounds like you have just been busy, like, you know, slam packed with work for the last couple of years. Um, and I was wondering, do you credit like part of your success to always trying different things, you know, starting in mortgage real estate isn't a huge jump from that. But just from what I've seen since joining the brokerage, we're always changing, always trying new things. Perfect example, this podcast would you credit a little bit of your success to that openness to try new things and adapt and change? Yeah, I definitely think, um, you know, that's going to be an attribute that I think is key with a lot of people who are successful in business, just the openness that, you know, and the willingness to understand that you don't know everything that right. you're in an ever changing market. That's changing at a, at a pace that we've never seen it this fast. So mm -hmm. the fact that you're open-minded, you know, that what you're doing today might not work tomorrow and that you like, you know, with a snap of a finger can almost pivot and move in a direction that you feel is going to be, you know, best suited for not only yourself, but an organization that you're part of, but in doing that, also having the mindset that as you're aware of Paul, there's going to be a lot of, you know, hurdles, you're going to have to leap and, you know, bumps and bruises along the way where of course. it's, it's not all going to be pretty. It's not all going to be sunshine <laughs> and rainbows. There's gonna be a lot of dark clouds and you trying to figure out what works sometime doubting yourself, but you just keep persevering. And if, something doesn't work, you, you, you know, you have the intuition, you don't give up, you just scrap it quick and then start to come up with something else that might. And it's just that, you know, that I guess relentless pursuit of trying to perfect your craft and, and really bring as much value to the marketplace as you can. Absolutely. And then that kind of ties into the other thing I wanted to mention. I touched on a little bit earlier, but I was wondering if you could maybe give kind of your perspective on just kind of what we're trying to accomplish with this podcast and what your goals are for it, that sort of thing. Yeah, what I, what I think the goal of this, Paul, is just kind of bring some transparency to the marketplace. You know, a lot of times, you know, when talking to agents, there'll be sometimes with brokerages, you know, canned presentations or whatnot, but just kind of getting some real authentic um, people on here to kind of really share not only their successes, but some of their hurdles and their trials and tribulations and where they were able to get to where they are now. Uh, so especially a lot of the, I guess, newer agents who are getting into the business that, you know, sometimes might doubt themselves or, they might see an agent at a high level of production, but aren't really aware of the journey, right? What did that look like right. before? I, you kind of see it's that old tip of the iceberg meme, right? You see the tip, you see, right, they're doing great now, <laughs> but you don't know everything that it took to kind of get there. So just bringing some transparency, some vulnerability uh, to the marketplace and just getting some real authentic, you know, people on here to kind of really talk about their journey. And hopefully that um, the audience will find value in that and it can help them throughout their journey as well. I would think so. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. I am too. So I'm excited to get started. Uh, glad we finally got episode one knocked out. Yeah, and... it's in the books now. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to the future. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's pretty much all we wanted to cover today. Uh, future episodes might be a little bit longer uh, as we get into, like you were saying, some more of agents backgrounds and deeper topics and things like that. But I think this is a great intro. So to everyone listening out there, I just wanted to say thanks for joining us on the first episode. Uh, go ahead and follow us across all of our social media platforms. Um, I'll put it in the description or on the screen. One of the two uh, should just be at the real estate playbook on everything. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel anywhere you might want to get your podcasts and keep an eye out for our upcoming stuff. Cause like we said, we plan to bring you probably a couple of these each month. Um, we have some great guests and topics lined up. So Joe, thanks, man. I'll see you around. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Look forward yes, to it. Take care. Take it easy.